From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is The Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, actor C. Thomas Howell and Dave Damashek. Plus the news with Chris Loxamana. And now, stay gold, pony boy, Adam Corolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. I'm going to mandate you get it on. Looking forward to this show. Great Damashek in studio. That's no, 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 no. Don't you, don't you do that. Don't you bury the lead. We got C. C. Thomas Howell. And from here on out, in honor of C, I'll thank you to call me W. David Damashek. W. No, Dave Damashek. We're not going informal today. No. Hey, muzzle tub to oh, you very right. quickly, Ace, and the whole gang. 14 mm-hmm. years of podcasting. Yes. I crazy. cannot, be- I r- really can't believe it because I think I was on your second or third one out of your house on those leather chairs that you well, had in the old house. Well, if you house. were on a leather chair, that was certainly in the first act of this 14-year I mean, four, show. That, that does, I mean, you know, 14 years, sheesh. Good I have, you. Thank you. I have important uh, decisions to make and concepts to get to that uh, I always think about Sheck. Sheck's brought some stuff for me, mm. so maybe we can kind of trade off back and forth. I was uh, watching... Sorry, I was uh, speaking to Dr. Drew earlier, and I was getting into this uh, conundrum that uh, I've expressed many times on this show, which is I can no longer order a vodka, soda, and lemon because it always shows up with a lime. And there's, there is, <laughs> it's true. It, it is, it is uncanny now. And I was saying that you have to kind of look at things and how they change, and and then why they change. So. We all grew up in a in a schoolyard in the fifth grade where nobody we knew was allergic to peanuts, and now they have a corral with benches in it for the peanut gallery, who they should definitely be called, for all the folks <laughs> that will go to anaphylactic shock if they see a peanut, right? So mm-hmm. you go, well, what has... Something has changed, and it's not a biology. It's a, it can't be that the human ha- has has evolved into not being able to tolerate De-evolved. peanuts. Devolved, yeah. Right. In in the last forty one years, it's 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 impossible. It's also I find it ironic that the number one food that animals universally eat, whether you're trying to set a rat trap or feed a pill to your dog, is peanut butter. But now humans. <laughs> <laughs> cannot consume human, cannot do peanut butter anymore. Uh, peanut butter is when you capture a squirrel or a dove or a rat or you want to bait something and you need one thing to feed them, it's either peanut butter or string cheese. Those are the two items that when you have no idea what the, if I ever like adopted a whale or something, I would go, you just give it peanut butter. <laughs> but take some string cheese and put peanut butter on it. Give it to them. True, uh, right. If the aliens All, landed and you wanted to make friends with them. I would offer a peanut butter-based yes. offering. <laughs> All creatures, not only on this globe, but, <laughs> but in the universe, respond positively to peanut and peanut butter, but now humans have decided it's a it's Boy, a no it's been, fly zone. It been only two hundred years that peanut butter. This is one of those things that didn't exist for you know thousands of of man's recorded history. George right. Washington Carver invented this thing out of nothing. Did not. <laughs> he did. I hate. I know we have a large black listenership, and I do not want to devastate you, but uh, Andrew Straub, I think it was Andrew Straub, uh, guy invented peanut butter. Uh, what in hell? I've oh, never heard. I, I, George Washington Carver mashed a lot of peanuts, but then he made axle grease and like lantern oil out of it, but he never. He, he, he was in his lab, and he, w- he was breaking for lunch, and he was asking his wife to bring him down a ham and cheese sandwich while he was <laughs> <laughs> creating peanut butter but not using it to spread. Never thought to consume it. Well, maybe in his mind it was so utilitarian. There's so many things What the hell was he make- doing with the peanuts if not making them to, to, to turn into his version of a, of a butter? He, he, I looked it up. He did not. Andrew Straub, you say. Rob. I think it was Straub, uh, Andrew Strobe or Straub or something. Or maybe it wasn't Andrew, but it was close to. We'll figure it out. All right. So here's my thing. Okay. What happened with lemons and limes that bartenders and airline stewardesses and everything have, have lost? It's lost its meaning. I was told many times you must say yellow lemon. 
in order to get yeah. people he, to bring he, you he a lemon. When, when he orders a drink, you go, I'll have a vodka soda with a yellow lemon. Yes. <laughs> he says that. It's now demeaning. you have to put yourself in the position of being a jackass. He yeah. has to explain that a lemon is yellow. But it is, it is, it is, it's now ubiquitous. It went from a coin toss to I'm now getting a lime. And then I suggested, and this is where this is going, I think with everyone staring at their phone, everyone, every, uh, TikTok, and the, the generation, you know, the average bartender's 26-year-old person, they've lost their ability to focus. Hmm. And because lemon and lime start with the same two letters, it, they've, they've been destroyed. And so what we need to do is designate another name for either lemon or lime. But then that led me to my age-old lime, li- right. argument, push and pull. And how four letters, first two letters are the same. As Drew pointed out, last letter, high stem. That was a, that was a <laughs> learned thing. But you're right. They, they rhythmically, they're the same amount of letters. And the first two are identical. And you're walking toward the door of the diner, talking on your yeah. phone. And bam, mm-hmm. right into the aluminum. So I said, what is wrong with us that we, we do this to ourselves with this uh, push and this pull? And the countless... Heartache it's caused. Oh, yeah. and by the way, our parents were victims of this too. Like your your dad in 1969 sure. tried to walk into a diner outside of Beaver Falls, pulled the thing when he should have pushed it. It banged. They hang the bells on there, which will still like alert everyone that this person can't read. And then everyone in the diner like cranes their head because they want to know what happened. Never fixed it. Never ends. You're right. 1969. Quick side note. When I was growing up, that makes me think of beads. That mm-hmm. there was an attempt for a generation to replace proper doors with beads hanging yeah, in doorways. Gone thing. now. Nobody does that anymore. Anyhow, back. Oh to yeah, what no, you were you're right. Well, there was. I had that too. Beads. Oh, you had one of those. It, yeah, you. It was kind of a hippy dippy. It was kind of cool, like the beads. Okay, the beads arguably do less of what you want a door to do than saloon doors. Saloon doors don't keep out flies. They don't keep out the homeless. They don't do anything except for comically spring back and snap whoever's behind you in the balls, right? There is no, there's nothing. What and the beads, the, but what was the point of saloon doors now that you bring those up? What, what, what value did they have? Oh, Aesthetic uh, value? No, eh. I, I have, I have oh, a theory. Have, oh, oh, I thought I was insulting you. No, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> The reason, I've just, David, I've just installed. The reason in <laughs> olden days they needed to invent saloon doors, which, again, didn't do anything. Because yeah. there were three feet of daylight above them and below them. They needed to invent saloon doors. Because I imagine saloons had doors, like proper doors. Yeah. You know, with maybe a hasp or bolt, deadbolt or lock on it or something. I don't know what those words mean, but the, okay. That's a way to secure a door. Okay, okay. Okay. So, a barrel bolt, perhaps. They probably had a door, like olden ye old pub in like mm-hmm. olden days and stuff like that. But then it came to the West. And the West, at least according to every movie I've seen, a fight would break out every night. That's right. And inevitably during the fight, somebody would get thrown out of the window. And back then, Glass was not cheap or easy to come about. You no, couldn't go yeah. down to the Home Depot and get yourself a new window. Not a phone call away. Uh, right. No, that was a that was a big ticket item. Sure. So somebody said, "I bet they'd like they'd like to toss people out of this venue, but we're losing a lot of windows <laughs> because the door's locked." Well, they can't throw him out of the door. You know, you're trying to throw a guy out by the seat of his pants and you got to stop and go turn the door and have someone hold it open and then throw him out. It interrupts the entire process. Yeah, right. So somebody said, let's make a door where you can throw people out of the saloon. This is a perfect door for tossing people. <laughs> and it really people. heightens the drama. When you, when yeah. you fly through, boom, boom, those right. two doors. Yeah. Yeah, right. And it probably saved a lot of windows. Amen. You know what? That's I, I like that quite a bit. I also love the the loose sense of trying to have a business back then in an old west saloon because mm-hmm. that, that back then you could just say like leave the bottle and the bartender apparently had no choice but to, to but to do it like yeah leave the whole bottle of whiskey like how are we gonna account for that like when, when it's closing time and we give him his bill how much are we charging this guy like I, I don't 
I don't know, you know. Oh. Yeah, and they didn't have any. Oh, wait. Hoot, you know, Hoot's going to be back tomorrow. But like, I, all right, but don't we need to bill him for tonight? All the whiskey he drank? And they didn't have that very primitive ways of measuring stuff. Like now you go to the airport, it's got that cap on yeah. it. It's got that leash that goes to the computer. It only pours out. Back then they had to use fingers. Yeah. I'll take two fingers mm-hmm. plain. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I bet bartenders had fat fingers back then <laughs> because you would want, or you, you would, would only pick, go to the bar yeah, where the fat fingered guy was. Cause I, <laughs> let me see those hands. Gus, I need three. Let me see your hands before we do your fingers. Cause we may use my fingers if they're fatter than yours. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would announce to the bar, who has the fattest <laughs> fingers in this place? And Hoss would get up, and I'd go, we're using Hoss's fingers. And Hoss, no, Hoss's thumbs. Yeah. And put the big toe in there, too. No pinkies allowed. Right. All right, so George Washington Carver did not invent peanut butter. Hmm. Uh, I got John Kellogg. I got um, Marcellus Gilmore. What did Andrew Straub invent? That's because I looked him up, and he was great. All right, so. We're having difficulty with the two L's and the lemon and the lime. And it's not that. It's that people have lost their ability to concentrate because mm-hmm. of technology and yeah. TikTok. We're only and, absorbing like 70%. Right, but our forefathers right. so not, didn't set us up for success is your other point. Right. We should have used different. But they thought to themselves, mistakenly, much like the inventor of the first snap top for toothpaste. Oh, well, then the problem is solved. There'll be no more women leaving the cap. <laughs> off of this toothpaste because that's an exclusive woman thing because now we have the snap top built in. Oh, contraire. You did not yeah. estimate. Uh, you did not estimate the resolve to fuck up the toothpaste. Because all women leave the cap up. It's a weird thing. And then get violent if you happen to broach that with them, which is a, 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 a great wiring. Top eight to ten most selfish act. It's it's in the running for me. The new, you know, like the old, you know, leaving your your grocery cart where you're Forever. finished with it. Once you finished your transaction with it, you just leave it there for someone else to deal with. The number one, it's it's obvious and lame to point out, but eh, these people who just leave their dog poop everywhere. Oh like, yeah, come on, on the way to school, like Disgusting. I gotta. It's, so, a, it's a horror. Sorry, update. Ambrose Straub, Ambrose Straub patented the uh, first peanut butter making machine. So uh, he didn't invent peanut butter, but he kind of did in the sense that anyone who mashed up peanuts kind of made peanut butter. He brought it. He was unable to share it with everybody in the world. All right. So with that in mind, in the first two letters of push and pull needing, (laughs) I've said many times, it should be push and yank. But and then there, we would solve the problem immediately, but we're not doing this. But then I I want to know other countries. What were they up to? Like what French, Italian? Ooh, Japanese, German, Sweden, are they dumb enough to outside of their diners to have push and to pull their version of it start with the same two letters? Because that would be insane to me. Yeah. And it turns out we're the dumbest country on earth <laughs> because. <laughs> Color me stunned. French <laughs> is posseur and terre or terror or whatever. It's, it's, it's P and it's T. So they went two different. You and didn't even just go with the first letter on the doors. <clears throat> yeah, and different lengths. Yeah, we couldn't do the first two letters. And that's it, a, I mean, that's a, a nice point, too. If At least if there were like, a, 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 you know, seven characters to three characters, your eye would pick that part up. You would rhythmically right. learn. You would learn that at the age of seven, and it would stay with you in, until the grave. I also have to jump in and say, in defense <laughs> of our people, all people who don't know how to open a door in the right direction— <laughs> The thing, the glass door that's got the same handle on either side, mm-hmm. you're leaving You're leaving this open to interpretation to begin with. There could be, you know, in olden days, there was like a clear push bar on mm-hmm. one side and then the other one was only for opening. Right. Now it's murky. Anyway, I'm sorry. Also, uh, in Italian, it's S-P-I-N-G-E-R for, for pull and then... Um, it's close to French with a tierra or something. It's a T-I again. So that in Japanese, it's an O-S, Osu versus a haiku with H-I. And in German, it's D-R, like drunken versus Z-N or some version. But it's a D-R versus a Z-I. And even in uh, Sweden, it's, a, it's an S-K versus a, a D-R. So we are the only Crystal clear. modernized culture that uh, that in, that... That participates in this folly. 
I, I mean, why can we not? Are we so intractable like the Titanic? It's too much to try and turn it now. Why can't we change this? These are things that I've seen Adam Carolla do. You've made society better. It's it's my charge. I, I look the man in the mirror and say, planet Earth is nice. This is a nice life, but I'd like to leave this world better than I found it. I think that's the mission you accepted many years ago yourself, Adam. Why I, can't we change this? Here's another letter Talk to Gavin Newsom. Thing. I want this. This would fix things with you and Gavin Newsom once and for all. If you could have that change. <laughs> Send him a DM. See if he gets sure. back to me. <laughs> Here's another conundrum mm -hmm. that has uh, international origins. Uh, electrocardiogram. Your dad's probably offered a few of those mm -hmm. or summoned a few of those. Uh, or it's shortened as an EKG. K. Oh, wow. Wow. K. E. K. G. For I cardio. Did, right. Where did the K come from? Why is it not an is it E. C. G. An, is it somehow an upgrade? E. C. G. No. E. C. G. No. It's just somehow an, it's the year. No. It's, it's fine. You're it's right. It's just an it's an abbreviation for electrocardiogram, but to put a K in there. Yeah. Fascinating, right? Very strange. You know, I've been pondering a lot lately. I don't want to turn into a whole thing. I have an I answer, by the way. Oh, you do? Anybody. Please, please. Uh, Germans invented it, and their uh -huh. cardio is with a K. They will use a K for compressor, too. Like, you ever see those uh, Mercedes, Mercedes yeah. with the supercharger on there? They're saying supercharging air, you know, compressing air, but it's, it's a K. So they will use a K in place of a C. This is invented. I was mistaken. I thought the EKG electrocardiogram was invented in Mexico. It turns out it's Germany. So you can't judge and you can never categorize cultures. But they categorize invented it. with a K. And so we do electrocardiogram, but we say EKG. And then this led me to another misuse of the K mm -hmm. versus the C. K. Done had nothing to do with Germany. This is done in the United States. This is us. The uh, cruiser, the K-9 unit, giant K. Right, right. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Wild stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We're doing it to ourselves. <laughs> I think, you. I don't know how that, that, that we would have such synergy, such overlap on our respective Venn diagrams of annoyances. Mm -hmm. Of late, the alphabet. Our alphabet mm -hmm. has been has been not, 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 not driving keeping me up at night, below grade, bothersome. Mm -hmm. We could have a nice and neat 25 letters. Mm. Where did C come from? Who does C think it's fooling coming in here? Hey, <laughs> you need a k sound? Now don't say k that to Thomas Howe. Don't <laughs> well, you attack that I, C. No, no, no. Please don't tell him we talked about this as before he gets in here. Okay. But let me let me just say something to you. You need the k sound? Mm -hmm. K. K's got you covered, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You're not doing that any any lift in there, C. Right. What are, what are you jumping into this act for? You need, oh, but wait, but we need C because what is S for then? Right. C's just a, a jive letter jumping into the alphabet <laughs> with no business being there whatsoever. We don't need the letter C. <laughs> 26 letters, that's clunky. 25 is nice and neat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Fair. Wants to get rid of the letter C. You yeah. know what else I was and thinking? And also, of? like telling a kid to learn your ABDs. Would pro <laughs> that flows? That's not a That's deal fine. breaker. That's, That's fine. fine. That's absolutely fine. The other thing that I'm fascinated by is the low self esteem that some letters must have. Think about spelling certain alphabet letters. Mm -hmm. Like if I say spell the alphabet letter B. How do you spell that, Donovan? B E E B E E D yeah. D E E D E. Yeah. Imagine if you're the letter F though. E F F. You don't even start with yourself. Oh yeah. Must be low. <laughs> Must be like oh, the, like don't that's a sore subject for me. Yeah F. But yeah. the other one that makes me wild is okay. Listen, so you have like A is like A Y Y or however you might spell that. So you couldn't have H <laughs> B A, but H like every other letter M is E M M N is E N N. Yeah, the letter is still in the in the spelling dominantly. Right. H. Who who decided that that's how we would pronounce that letter? The mm. the, the goalposts, old mm. style goalposts. How we what are we going to call that? Ha 
No. H. H. Who can what, what kind of crazy <laughs> word is that to apply to these goalposts? And it's the last letter of push, and it's a long stem letter. <laughs> So W W is two U's put together. Right, right, W, right. but it's two V's. Well, I don't yeah. have I's. Right. So not only does it not have its well, letter in the it, slap in the face to V, which yeah. is spelled V E E at least, but still right. W. I mean, I don't even know what the hell. But so called a willy woo. Dave, the Italians are on this. There is no K in the Italian alphabet. I mean, apparently not. Well, they got Germany. The Germans are in love it. with the K's. <laughs> They could start a war if we try to wrestle those K's right. away from yeah. them. Can I tell you something else very quickly? Hmm. Now that you're talking international matters and fun words and everything mm-hmm. else, I'd like to tell you. I'd like to give you the update on the three best names in the sports world right now. Mm-hmm. Please. Are you ready for these? Mm-hmm. I, I, I think you'll find them all delightful. All okay. three of these. Mm-hmm. A St. Louis Cardinals outfielder getting ready right now for the upcoming season. His name? Lars Newtbar. <laughs> <laughs> Lars <laughs> Nudbar, two O's, two A's in the last name. Nudbar. <laughs> Lars Nudbar sounds like something you take when you're hiking. Yeah, it sounds right? delicious. I mean, like I'm leaving the house. You got your water. Very Have you a got, look here. You got yeah. your Lars Nudbar. <laughs> take that little bit of water. It'll make you feel good. I'll, right. You'll wow. be ready for the second part of the climb. That's a great name. The classic at this point, spelled with a K, of course. Classic. The New York Islanders two way forward first round uh, first overall pick a few years ago Capo Caco. Oh man, that is good. By the way, say. I was delighted when I thought it was Capo Caco. I thought it was Capo Caco, and I, I thought that was dynamite. Right, we got <laughs> no, no. better. Rangers fans, let me know. No, no, you're mispronouncing it. It's Caco. Wow. Said, well, uh, even better. Caco, it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Pitt, surprising uh, men's basketball team this year. Led in part by 6'11", Egyptian-born, Finland-raised, 6'11", maybe about 92 pounds guy. Maybe I'm exaggerating the weight part, but you you get the picture. Federico, Federico! Oh, man. <laughs> it's a, so good to say it I, twice. I get on, I, 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 I'll go out of my way on Twitter or otherwise to hit up play-by-play guys when they say, like, Federico with the with the rebound. Like, right. What, what the gods have given you a gift. Every time you say his name without fail, you better go Federico, Federico, <laughs> right. or shame the devil. You're only going to call him <laughs> Federico once? Yeah. What a waste. Oh, man, I cannot wait to hear all these names. And and we, you should put together a two-hour <laughs> montage. It, you know, goes back to Debrickashaw and Bake McBride and all the great all the great sports Federico, names. Federico, Federico. Beautiful. His uh, name is so I love that. See, I don't I resent parents who do stuff like Pete like they're Peters, the great goalie from the uh, you know from the NHL way back. He, they named him Peter Peters. That's yeah. that's that's unfair to the kid. Federico, Federico. That's beautiful. Chef's mm. kiss. So I've mm. I've met a, a Dale Daly and that that was that was pretty close but then another kid uh, his last name was De Los Santos. So his parents named his first name Santos. Mm. So Santos de los Santos. That's good. Not since the 70s sitcom Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. (laughs) And, of course, the international leader, Boutros, Boutros Galli. (laughs) Have I been so excited to hear the same name. Best dictator name. Two two times. I haven't leaned into the best dictator name yet, but you'll Um, get to that. All right. Well, speaking on our international news and theme of today i'm gonna ask uh sheck to help me i'm not lean i'm not leaning into this with any prejudice i i actually am looking for help mm. in this department i was driving through a dicey part of los angeles on the way to lax a couple of weeks ago past a sign in front of a restaurant kind of broken down place on the corner and it was painted on the stucco above the restaurant and it said mexican cuisine and i thought i've seen a lot of mexican food places but i don't know if you guys have earned cuisine that as a country you got to step up to cuisine you guys may not be at cuisine levels yet when it comes to your culture you know what i mean you need a stout air force you can't have drug cartels running the place you you may not, I may not give you that cuisine. Yeah, you got to earn the cuisine. But then I started thinking about it. Canada's pretty evolved, but they haven't earned a cuisine. 
They haven't upped their food no, game. They don't, they don't really. get a cuisine. It's kind of, what, what kind of food do they serve there? A guy told me unironically, like, oh, you got to go to this new restaurant. He's like, I'm hit and miss on Hawaiian food. And I'm like, outside of Hawaii, I didn't know that that was a place you go, to, that there are places to go. But apparently, And they haven't one. earned a cuisine. Cuisine. Right. Hawaii, you got to earn your cuisine. Canada, there's no Canadian cuisine. No. Now, England doesn't really have a cuisine. No. Fish Fran- and chips, France. Maybe. French, French cuisine. That's probably oh, yeah. where cuisine was oh, born. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. This is a tough one. Uh, Germany. Ger- German cuisine. Cuisine. No. I German think of food. Them I as- want German food. Yeah. I'd, I'd almost go chow. But I'd, uh, I'd <laughs> almost go chow. But because the link I'm meats here and to pretzels and beer. Yeah, if they do cuisine, it's with a K though. But I'm here <laughs> t- not to not to jog your memory in terms of how do you hear it, but have they earned it? You know what I mean? Like I might have to go down to that Mexican food place and tell them politely, of course, we're going to have to take your cuisine, <laughs> but I will give it to more deserving country. Like we say Chinese food, but I think they've earned a cuisine, cuisine. over yeah. there. I love Chinese food and cuisine. I eat it all the time. It's, it's a lot of variations going on. It's wonderful, yes. So I may say to the Mexico, <laughs> or at least that establishment, I need the cuisine. Yeah. There are only so many. China's <laughs> earned it. I'm not saying you can't get it back, but yeah. you got to do something. You got to step outside of cheese and tortillas and beef. You know, if you're you going to step run, it up. I'll meet you halfway, Mexican f- restaurant. Mexican I'll tell you food, what, Mexican right. food restaurant. If you guys can do me a dessert, I'll see if I can get that cuisine back. <laughs> but so far, the flan and the churros, like that, that's for nine years. I think you're you know? tough but fair. It's the same thing I say about Bob Greasy. Uh, you know, like ah, is Eli Manning a Hall of Famer? Like I. I don't know. I can't get caught up in that. Like, and, unless we're going to take Bob Greasy's gold jacket away, which we should. So, mm-hmm. Like, we only have so many, Bob. You got to give it back because you're not worthy of a Hall of Fame. Now nah, you sound anymore. like my mom. <laughs> 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 All right. I want to Chinese, Japanese. I think we can give oh, them yeah. a Japanese. Cuisine. Oh yeah, they need Japanese. a cuisine. Yeah, cuisine. I, by the way, I had a I had a brilliant idea recently. I went to a hibachi place. You know where the where the chef in the literal high hat. Is mm-hmm. He does his performance and everything, and it's a good time with the kids. And now, by the way, as another side, we went to one of those, and I realized I don't think I'm a great person, but I realized I'm not completely soulless because when my kids, you know, they get distracted, they're doing whatever, they're playing grab ass, and they're not paying attention to the show at the hibachi place when the guy's mm-hmm. flipping the shrimp things mm-hmm. in this hat, yes. and he's making the volcano fire mm-hmm. of onions and everything. And sometimes they get distracted, and I feel bad for him. He's dancing for us, and they're not watching the performance. So I overdo it. I overcompensate. I'm like, whoa, hey. that, that's the best That's the best volcano <laughs> of onions that I have ever seen. And I do that, and I, I feel like I'm okay. You know? Yeah. Like, a good, good yeah, for you, you Dave. Yeah, Like, the kids ain't paying attention, but but the boss, the, 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 the guy cook, uh, cooking up there. But my invention is, or my thought is, why don't we – do the hibachi stuff. And I like the show. I enjoy the show. But it's the only way to get that delicious steak and shrimp on that hibachi grill like that. Why doesn't somebody do like a pickup, like a drive through of hibachi? All the, I, I when I it. don't have time for the show, which I'll be <clears throat> back for. You saw my reaction to it, sir. I love it. <laughs> but, I, but you know, sometimes I just want to get the fix. I want to get quick. that. Oh, Dave, do you, that serious fried question. Rice. Yeah. Do you think medieval times should have a drive through <laughs> Because that's what you're saying. <laughs> I'm bitten by my own snake. <laughs> I like that you took the glasses off. I'm punctuating. <laughs> I'm punctuating my point by taking my glasses off. I have thoughts about uh, Benny Hanna. Uh huh. It's maybe controversial. I got a couple more countries to get through on my okay, cuisine please. list. We need to take a quick break. We'll be right back right after this. All right, let me tell you about uh, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes life bogs you down. You feel overwhelmed. You need to work with a therapist, and it can help you get, uh, well, closer to a better version of yourself. Look, if there's anything we've learned over the last couple of years, you got to get your head right, and then get your body right, and get the rest of your life right. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. If you're thinking about therapy, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable and entirely online. You just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, 
And uh, you can switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. But uh, let's take care of ourselves in 2023. Let's get some better help. Right, Dawson? If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can help get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Corolla today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Corolla. All right. So, uh, Benny Hanna thoughts. Um, I have a big problem with Benny Hanna. I agree with you that I love the food. Mm -hmm. And... For many people, including my son, who eats in a way that makes me angry, Benny Hanna is Valhalla for him. He's he's come home because when he eats dinner, he gets a pile of steak, he gets a pile of rice, and he gets a pile of vegetables, and then he eats them all separately. No. No co-mingling, which is this insane. Is your, this is your child. Oh, I thought he was. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not yeah. so sure. <laughs> Let me take my glasses off. <laughs> but I look at him and I'm like, take a scoop of the rice, get a piece of steak on there and get a little onion or veggie on there and just scoop it all, all in at once. Yeah, that's the way to do it. He's like, now I'm going to finish all the steak. Then I'm just going to eat the plain rice. Plain and rice. I'm like, ah, oh, what the? No. Now the problem, so it upsets me. Now, the guy who's 30 feet away from us, Mike August, is equally as upsetting because he mashes everything together like a madman with a, with a, it was like, it's like that movie Tar or something. I didn't see it, but she conducts, and that's what he does with a <laughs> knife and a fork. I sure. angrily just, just, whiplash or something the, just, the first date at the end of the table that you weirdly have to share that's a weird thing too about the about the benihana places the sharing of uh, tables yes, with people yeah, like yes. in the you're very close now, to them you need and, your own table and you kind of have to react but with the them. problem and is august eats off of their plates that's what's embarrassing. august will take a, a nice <laughs> cube of lasagna and just pulverize it right <laughs> before he takes a bite okay so equ- they're both equally as upsetting mm-hmm. sunny mike august the Benny Hanna problem is I love all the food. I'm with you. I need it all at once. They do the shrimp and they give you the three shrimp and you just eat the three shrimp. And then they do the steak and you eat the steak. And then at the end or at some point they do the rice, which is the best because it's the, you know, pork fried or whatever. They're Garlic doing butter. That's what they do. But too. then the rice shows up. But you find yourself eating like Sonny eats when the reality is, is getting that rice, getting the shrimp, getting the veggie, getting them all into one. Yeah. That's the most enjoyable, but no one has that kind of willpower to sit there. And yeah, Mike will grab your shrimp. If you're just going to sit there and stare at it for 20 minutes, yeah, so, waiting the for the rice. So I, I made cook. a similar point to, to remember Jimmy Kimmel. No, no, no. Of course. Oh yeah. Yeah, but no, we worked. Mm-hmm. I worked with you, mm-hmm. and you worked with him, and I remember. Anyway, he. Uh, I brought my my long standing thought that talk about making the world a better place. In most circumstances, a plate is not better than a bowl. A bowl mixes your food for you. And mm. oh, he scoffed at how ridiculous an yeah. idea. <laughs> scoffed at the notion of it. No, I got to tell you that the greatest innovation that's new to my life is the plate. That turns up That's on the side, the one. just an inch and a quarter. It's a, it's it's a plate. It's a bowl. It's right. it's all the above. It's a Swiss Army knife knife of of eatery. It's just it just goes and it's got just that lip on yes. the side. Perfect. I've always said it should all be Corolla that way. and Kimmel, both <clears throat> nice guys. Corolla ultimately much more progressive, mm-hmm. you know, than 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 Jimmy is. That, and, well, and you I mean, he, didn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't even sign off on my yogurt with fruit in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Told me it would never work. He it. <laughs> we don't have, we don't have, we, we are not evolved enough and we don't have enough scientific knowledge to invent a yogurt that has fruit no, in no. the middle. No, no, For the record, I have to, I have to explain what it was. I'm sure people have heard this a number of times. <laughs> the argument was that you said, why would you not put the fruit at the bottom so you can mix it better? No, I said no at, at, at the top. At the top. No. Wait. You said wait. I'm, wait. 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 The no. fruit comes at the bottom. At the bottom. The fruit. You said it yes. should be in the middle. I said it should be in the Crazy middle because mixing. when you go to the bottom with the spoon, then the fucking yogurt goes it's, three inches up the spoon. There's nothing right. worse than handling yogurt spoon. That's correct. You know, I mean, it's got the weird yogurt. It's 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 bizarrely um, 
it's bizarrely sexual to try to lick it off. It seems Spoons very homoerotic. <laughs> it's weird. You don't know have to do with it. You don't want to wipe it down with a napkin. It can, you'll never get all of it out. Right. Can't do it, but no. fruit in the middle. You need you need a stirring spoon and then an eating spoon. The <laughs> mm-hmm. way it's a per- The argument specifically was. I was there. Go ahead. <laughs> Jimmy's assertion was that the fruit is put at the top, but mm. it sinks to the bottom. <laughs> That was his argument, no. which makes no. it's the most cockamamie thing I've, <laughs> I've, I've heard that touch. man say. What? I, the, what? Wait, wouldn't it? Why would I, I've said there were certain? How would it sink to the bottom? <laughs> what? And and how would it? How would the yogurt, the white yogurt above it, remain pristine? To, if you put raspberries, strawberries, in there, or strawberries, strawberries the, in there. 2022 Shecky Award winner for Fruit of the Year is a side right. note, by the way. It's the strawberry. I don't know oh, if you heard the I know. Mix, I read. So I, I, know. I get the papers. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I watch CNN. <laughs> the, the papers. <laughs> I get all the yeah, papers. It would turn it pink. Of course. Yeah. It would turn it pink. It's got juice inside. It would make the uh, the residual <laughs> strawberry would get would stain the white yogurt. I told why him. Would you, why would you even say that? Why I did said he, to why him. Why would he come up with that nonsense? <laughs> I think he was being unduly combative, but I said to him, all right, I'll tell you what we're going to do then. I'm going to get one of those, <laughs> one of those newts and yogurts that's all white yogurt, not pre you know, not the colored stuff, the flavor, just white. Pure yogurt. With, yeah. the, with the strawberry fruit at the bottom. I'm going to take it in the fridge over here in the <laughs> snack zone, and I'm going to flip it over. And then we're going to wait 10 days, and then I'm going to open it. <laughs> And if all the fruit is at the lid now, and there's no remnants of any of it on the white, I'm going to put $10,000 up right now. Then he yelled at me to get the fuck out of the office. <laughs> or, or this one, which check, my entire adult life has been with this, uh, especially with women, where they go, why are you obsessed with yogurt? <laughs> I go, I'm not obsessed with it. I, I, I've... If, if they had listened to me, I've got this is over 20 years now. Fruit in the middle yogurt. Game changer. You're, yeah, listen, you're doing your version this of surgery. This is my surgery. push and pull. This is, I'm that, trying to help. It. I'm not, that's all. Yes. Same, I, I get the same uh, the same jive. That's a, you know what they call that? Haters. Ah, know. that's what the Just kids are calling hate. it now. That's, that's called being a hater. I know we have a lot to do. We I got guess the I'm, four more cuisines here. <laughs> I want to hear four more cuisines. I also, though, am anxious, really, to hear your thoughts on the Aaron Rodgers thing. Mm. Or you're aware of what he's been doing, right? I have no... Are you kidding? <clears throat> I missed it. You well, don't know when... about his darkness retreat? Oh, uh, when did this hit? It just happened. Oh, he just, I... Aaron he just got Rodgers, out. who is... I don't want to get into the whole thing with you, but, but you know you know Aaron Rodgers last three years, two th- years of his life, whatever. The th- comments he's made and all yeah, this. Controversial. And right. He's he's got this messianic complex now though, where he has all the answers, mm-hmm. which is a weird thing. But it's not uncommon for people who are that insulated and told all the time, slapped on the back, "You're a genius at what you do," and somehow then this this transfers and um, uh, you know transcends mere footballing mm-hmm. to now he has all the answers about life. He, mm-hmm. He's unlocked the the, mm-hmm. the tricks mm. and. So most recently, as he now has to decide, does he want to go back to the Green Bay Packers? Does he want to retire or maybe play the field a bit? He may Mm -hmm. get traded to the Jets, the Raiders, or like I say, walk off into the sunset. So to help get his mind right, he went into what now is being described as after the fact, because he's done with it, a four-day darkness retreat. Mm -hmm. Where he's in abject darkness Mm -hmm. in what's been described a Mm hobbit-like space 300 foot little apartment in a in a dungeon there the Mm -hmm. pictures we're seeing here they're all over the internet Mm -hmm. he goes down into this thing and he he lived down there for four days in in darkness 300 square feet solitary confinement is what it is i think it's a fascinating i i if this is all new to you meditate on it and get back to the audience tomorrow because i really do want your full thoughts on what you think of this because i legitimately think no joke i think it makes a statement about like the old, the old cliche about money not buying happiness. You're, you're, you got to be worth two hundred million dollars, Aaron Rodgers. Like you can't find peace at, at thirty nine. Like you have to go and basically treat like the worst prisoner, the the the, the, the ne'er do well prisoner. That's the treatment you're subjecting yourself to to get your brain right. It's really mm. weird stuff to me.
I, I find, but anyway, if you're not aware of it, read up on it because I find it, as I say, bizarre. Oh, and he, you know, he's a, he's a he's an ayahuasca enthusiast, which you know, <clears throat> good, by, fine by me. Take whatever you want to take, but yeah. Um, can you use the flashlight on your iPhone? <laughs> That'd be my first question, and, and if the answer is no, I'm out. I I think to answer your question, Shaq, and then we got to listen to a clip of okay. uh, you asking about must win games because oh, yeah. we got a clean version of that. Um, I think what it is is you say <clears throat> you have uh, all this money, you know, sort of now what? Uh, but I think this is the dominion of people with the money. These are the people that are doing this. This is basically sort of a my theory. Whenever I talk to dominatrix, um, they always, I, you know, I get into a mm-hmm. cart and the guy pretends to be a horse. I put a bit in his mouth and he pulls me in a circle and I whip him. It's always the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. It's never the guy who's doing the cinder block wall on the side of the freeway. Yeah, I know out here. that you are exactly that right. guy wants a Corona and some pussy. He gets his life is being beat on by a dominatrix known as society. <laughs> so people always That's want a really big one. I know. People want the opposite of what. And when you realize you can buy anything and have anything, you quickly realize you don't find happiness. Right. You bought yo. He's got a Bentley or a Rolls Royce, and then he starts getting. He starts not appreciating it after day number three. So so then those are the guys that are jumping in the frozen lakes, doing the deprivation tanks, ayahuasca. Those are all the guys um, like uh, what's, Oh God, what's his name? Who ran Facebook? What's it? Twitter? No, not Zuckerberg. Jack. Jack Dorsey. Yeah. Guys like Jack. Yeah, Dorsey. Yeah, yeah, they're right. they're They have more money than they can. You know, the, the notion of, at age 37, you have more money than you can spend in your lifetime. Is a, a, It's a burden that people think they want, but it's also kind of a weird thing. And that's where the exploration comes What happens comes when in. you achieve all your dreams and there's still 40 or 80 years left to live? I, I, right. yeah, I, I think that that's probably the correct answer. So for me, it'd be like, Oh, what if they change the restaurant doors from push to yank? And what if <laughs> they change the name of lime to start with a letter that wasn't an L? And Yogurt. what if that Mexican food place gave me their cuisine and said I could hand it to, to a Chinese restaurant place down the street? At some point, I would start reeling. Yeah, what do you, <laughs> you do? You know what I mean? What do you do with your life, your time? I got two more thoughts. Oh, no, let, let's, hear the, let's hear the clip. Uh, now we're talking oh, about yeah. sports. Set it up, Sheck. Okay, so, you know, uh, for the last, the better part of the last dozen, 13 years, um, I've always been amused by <clears throat> the so called media night or media day that precedes the Super Bowl. Super Bowl week is, is started officially, I suppose, by the two teams arrive in the, in the host city and then they, they have media night where all the media, um, can go out and ask them questions. This year it was conducted in Phoenix, uh, in, in Phoenix's arena. I forget which one, their hockey or uh, basketball one, even though it, was, it wasn't their hockey one. Anyway, it was their basketball one. Either way, um, it is, I'm sure you've seen clips, even if you're not a football fan, because it draws out those people who are looking for their 15 minutes of fame. They dress mm-hmm. as the Statue of Liberty, or there was a guy there this year who was apparently nude, but was covered in a full body barrel kind of a look, oh, you know, clownish kind of. yeah. Yeah, ca- oh, yeah right, it's exactly right. Um, you know, goofballs, but, you know, obvious goofs trying to, you know, be silly heads and, and get a laugh out of people. The other half of the people there are the overly serious journalists mm-hmm. who, I mean, if you want to be taken seriously, as a general note, then go cover, go cover geopolitics. Don't cover football. I mean, right. if, you, if, you, if, if you want cred as a journalist, mm-hmm. that, in my opinion, mm-hmm. with few exceptions, mm-hmm. those guys are very serious, and they are ticked about the people who are dressed up like clowns. And it's doing a travesty. Mess. Right. I mean, what, what are you doing? We're trying to and they try to engage in serious minded conversation with these people while surrounded by 300 other people like, mm-hmm. hey, what's your favorite kind of lunch meat? Like kind of questions. And right. these people are like, what's it mean this mm-hmm. time around for you after this journey you've been on these last six years to finally return for a chance at a Lombardi? Like <laughs> right. now ain't the time. Nah. <laughs> right. like, and literally talking about Bible verses and stuff like that. It's like 
this ain't the place for that either. It's too deep. So I try to thread the needle by asking the most inane question you could possibly ask, um, but doing it seriously and dressed in a suit so that people don't see me coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's my commentary, Adam. I'm right. satirizing the state of sports journalism we... by asking the football players before the Super Bowl if the Super Bowl is a must-win game. All right, let's hear it. Travis, would you say this is a must-win game? <laughs> 1,000%, man. Is this a must-win game? <laughs> yeah, I would consider it a must-win game for sure because uh, if you don't, you're going home without the trophy. So definitely a must-win game. Yes on the must-win game. Yeah. <laughs> Is this a must-win game? Well, they're all must-win games, but this is a more of a must-win game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and check, people so get so mad. They got really they they Why? were calling. They were just Funny. like some idiot just asked everybody if this is I a must that. win game. Like that was the all over the the Twitter and NFL media. Everybody was just talking about some 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 rogue reporter is going around asking that. And, and what kind of jackass? Well, yeah. guess it's Super Bowl week when the dummies come out and start asking ill informed questions. Like, is the Super Bowl? Uh, I think so. Wow. And they it. tweeted out and get millions of. Clicks. I know. Well, you <laughs> congratulations. Yes, Thank you. you did your job. I also apologize to Jalen Hurts for not believing he could get to the Super Bowl, and he said after after two full beats of silence, <laughs> "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple more cuisine okay. countries to get into. Uh, Japan with India. Ooh, I think you know what exotic cuisine, mm. right? It's it's the definition of exotic. I love Indian food, Me too. but I don't know if it has enough range to be a cuisine. Hmm. It's basically the same four things I get every time, but it's great. Blindfolded, I I wouldn't be able to tell <clears throat> what, like what the difference between the curries or anything like that. But I love it. I could eat it all day. All right, here's a, a no brainer: Russia, Russia. No brainer, he says. I, I don't feel they've earned a cuisine, especially with this Ukrainian whole thing. Oh yeah, you know that's it's, it's a political thing. Now. Well, uh, uh, everything of you know these days. <laughs> I, yeah. I just don't feel like I've ever <laughs> been in the mood for Russian cuisine. Uh, just uh, I mean, maybe a, you know Russian could school me up, but I don't feel they've earned my cuisine. What I, I, cuisine. I, when you say Russian cuisine, now I'm trying to think. I, I should be able to summon. So they they have the uh, the um, beet soup, borscht. Right? Borscht. Yeah, yeah, that ain't that ain't a no. thing <laughs> for for Damashek. And also, Do you know that they eat bears, not Russians, but people. I didn't know that people ate bear. I asked that a, a year or two ago to somebody. I was like, why don't we we eat every beet? We eat most beets. Why not bear? And I was corrected. No, they no, eat. they we do eat bears. Eat- I, I wonder if Russians eat bear. <clears throat> Also, Russians, it seems to me, need help in the cocktail department because it's all just vodka. They're all just drinking vodka. There's nobody drinking a good bourbon over there. Like, I I imagine there is. good Russian beer. I've never heard of it. And it's all straight vodka. Do they drink white Russians in Russia? I don't think they do. Good question. I think they, it feels like room temperature vodka in a tumbler, no ice, no lemon or lime. And they just, (laughs) that's what I hear. I'm saying maybe we could loosen them up with with a nice Manhattan or slow gin fizz. (laughs) You know See what I mean? the world, yeah, a little uh, with, with gentler eyes, right? All right, last two, Greece. I mean, I mean, if we're talking about range, what, what, there's no range. Not there. a ton of range with no. the Greek food. No, I love it. No. I mean, sorry, too, you can't sorry. get a cuisine. Sorry, Greece. Here's one, Thailand. Hmm. Hmm, I love Thai food. I vibe to the exotic nature of it once again, just as I did to the Indian food. Hmm. I'm. <sighs> I'm going to leave. You know what? I, I, I'm going to defer to you, Adam. I, I, if I made the argument for India that there wasn't enough range, then, I got to go not enough range with Thai food. Right. As much fair. as I love Indian and Thai food, they have not earned a cuisine. Yeah, China and Japan reign superior over yes, there in Asia. That's I think right. Thailand's close, though. We're veering into that territory where, where Adam has said the word cuisine enough in the last 20 minutes that it's one of those where it's starting to lose meaning to me. Mm. Like cuisine, <laughs> cuisine. I don't know how to spell cuisine. Well, that's what I'm going to tell that whoever the proprietor is of the Mexican food place in L.A., I'm going to, you You start playing fast and loose with cuisine and it loses its meaning. That's right. I don't know what it means anymore. <laughs> Neither the white or the black Russia, Russians have uh, is, has a Russian origin. 
They don't uh, they don't have that. It's just called Russian because there's vodka in it. All right, uh, one of the last ones for you. White us. There Check. is no site. Are there? Are they, what's that? My last what? No, I got one for you. Oh, go I ahead. Got more. Unless you have some. No, no, no. Okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, I think the lime as a bartender, it has less use, and they're trying to slip it by you. I think well, they're trying to. Th- I is, think they're it, trying to drop the lime in your lap, even though they know you want a lemon. But to them, lemon is more precious. Yeah, lemon. Let's are, see if I can. Limes this on this are lemon. now cheaper and they're more durable. Yes, uh, they last longer, so they're trying to move it. But they don't taste us. good. And and you know who figured that out? I've hailed them on this very show at, on more than one occasion. The people at Starburst. Starburst made the scene in what seventy eight, Adam. You were Early, you were yeah. matriculating mm-hmm. when that made the candy scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Starburst. They give you three. They give you. They give you the four dynamite flavors. They give you. They give you the uh, the strawberry. They give you the orange. They give mm-hmm. you the lemon, and the lime. Nevertheless, it's a big hit with the kids mm-hmm. our, our age growing up. We loved it. The Starburst. Lemon and lime. One half of the flavors available to us are lemon and lime. Yeah. They see the air in their ways. But wait, we're doing great. But we can be better. We can be better, <laughs> the, 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 the head scientist in the lab says. Let's eschew the lime. Who mm-hmm. wants lime candy? What kind of weirdo? Nobody what wants weirdo lime. kid would eat the, lime candy? I think there was a lifesaver that was lime. Always the worst. Yeah, lime. Yeah, that's, spree. Yeah. Spree, too. Had green. The greatest The greatest uh, uh, surprise was when you bit into a green thing. And you're like, oh, I'm going to have to suffer through another piece of lime candy. Like, oh, it's watermelon. Oh, it's yeah, green, green apple. apple. What a oh, treat. Green apple, yeah. Yeah. Um, they do away with the lime. They replace it with cherry. Now oh, we're talking wow. about a murderer's rub. Yes. Yes. With orange and strawberry and cherry <laughs> upgraded. That's all Adam's trying to do, everybody. Get off his back with a push and pull. With the lemon and lime. They did it early. With the, the K's overseas. They did it early in the uh, 1980s. Yeah, I know they that's, that's all. He, all right. He, he but I'm saying lesson. Starburst figured this out, but proprietors of diners with their push and their pull set in their ways. Right. I don't so, like it. Right. This is this is the same thing as the peanut butter to bring the whole conversation home. This isn't evolving. This is devolving as a mm-hmm. society, Adam. So <laughs> I wish I could take my my glasses. <laughs> now a a uh, back to the uh push and the pull and the knob and the handle and, and the bar. Uh, I brought this up on stage in Baltimore, but I wasn't ever to, wasn't able to fully, fully explore it because it's a live audience. It's a comedy club. You know, you can't drill down like we can drill down here. Um, <clears> There's <throat> a couple of things. The do not disturb placard that you would hang from the doorknob in your hotel room still has the slit above the circle. But right. there are no more door knobs. They're door handles. And they have a kind of knife edge shape to them. And when you hang this on, it promptly falls. It slides, it, it, it down. slides down. It either goes through the crack or it slides down and falls off. And if you attempt to turn the knob, if you're inside, it just falls on the floor. So you go to bed at night, you put the do, you know, it's one thirty in the morning, you're drunk, you put the do not disturb on there, you shut the door, you latch it, and you hear the thing hit the ground. Yeah. Then you have to go back If out. you're lucky. If you're lucky, you you're hear lucky it. You're oh, lucky you yeah. hear it. I literally put it on my door when I left and was walking down the hall and heard it hit the ground. Had to, had to circle back. We cannot use the slit anymore on the do not disturb because we no longer use knobs there there's zero knobbage in any there's no hotel that is so (laughs) old that there's a knob in it maybe some boutique place in you know the english countryside or something they're all handles and they're all sort of a little sharp like a little knife i know yeah right and they sit at a little downward slope so if you put it on there it just slides off and the part of the handle that goes onto the door is a little too robust, a little too round to, to make accommodate. To, yes, yes. I found uh, somebody had stuffed mine like down, just wedged it into like the crack between the knob and the door. Uh, it, it, it when I was uh, in Baltimore, it fell off like literally thirty four times. Like I just kept kept replacing. You cannot make these things with the slit. I, anymore. I, they all need the round, up, and it needs big bore. 
Got to be big bore. I I found myself trying to get the do not disturb thing, and it's right. You teeter because it it bends out a little, or it bends in a little bit, mm-hmm. right at the very end of it. And I I find myself trying yes. to balance it delicately. Mm-hmm. Like, what well, what the hell am I suddenly put in this position for hotel? You know, <laughs> just put a put a piece of velcro. I, now I am disturbed. Put velcro. I didn't want to be disturbed, and now that's exactly what you've done. It but why me. why would you attach it? To a piece of the door that is literally trying to buck it off like a Bronco. You know, I mean, like, yeah. I'm trying, I'm going to put this thing. Not fun. It's not be, like it's a, a, it's a fun recreation for your visitors. It'd be hotel. like, oh, what if we hung a Playboy air freshener from the rearview mirror of our car and the rear view kept shaking and going, <laughs> yeah, get out of here. I don't <laughs> want you on me. So, you'll be more comfortable on the dash. Get down there. Like. I knocked it. All I did was keep knocking. Why, what? Just Velcro it onto the door. Just slap it. Oh yeah, slap Magnets, it on the door. Velcro. Magnet or a little a little peep thing where you just slide the thing open or slide it shut. Like, what are we doing with this folly? It's it's insane. I this is a great uh, thought. Say, I mean, like right. you, you can jerry rig it. So that you prop it up there. Right. But then when you come home, you open it, it falls off, or yeah. then you have to reset it. You like, couldn't do it. It would be physically impossible to do from in. You could prop it up outside the door, but you wouldn't be able to be in the room when you did it. So you'd need a kindly passerby or, to or, help you out. You'd or have to stay in there and wait for another system. hotel guest. Or just like a do not disturb squire, like someone you traveled with. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think that's what I am, actually. Who to you. could then prop it on your room after your door was sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> shut and locked. You know I what I mean? I always wondered what squires were for. Now we found the use for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, whoever's manufacturing these things, we need to change. The slit is only there for the knob. Mm-hmm. It has no utility and is, and is very hurtful minus the knob. And since knobs, like, let's, let's try to think. When is the last time you went to a hotel and had a knob, old schooly knob for a door? Handle. I mean, uh, it's been decades. 20 years, yeah. 25 years. I I, they, they only exist now in uh, motels with an outdoor entrance. Oh, right. Those like ones still have lock. knobs. Yeah, yeah. those, still have those the were knobs. built in the 60s. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we need to update these signs and we need to get rid of the slit and we need to make a slightly bigger bore so that we can slide it all the way up and not have it fall off when we turn the handle because you can't have it on the handle part. This is a big May- issue. Dave. I was just about to say, maybe the solution to the lemon and lime thing is that we just do away with limes. <laughs> do we need limes at all? I don't. We have lemons. <laughs> we don't. That's exact. You know, I like a pancake, but in a world where there are waffles... I can make a case for why I want a pancake versus a waffle, but most of the time, as we've discussed, a waffle is a syrup cup. It has multiple syrup cups all over. Why is my self-esteem low? Is that why I would want a pancake where the where the syrup is going to run off of it? Uh, well, well, can like, I like, like like a do not disturb sign at a, at a hotel in the 21st century? No, thank you. I'll take the thing that holds it. Maybe we take the lime, and since we we have a bunch of limes now laying mm. around with no use. We replace the do not disturb sign with the do not disturb line. <laughs> oh, that would just like now that outside you're your door. Now just put the lime right there outside the door. Now they know. Problem oh, solved. Oh, oh. Jimmy, no, 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 no. Look, they got the lime. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy said lime in the middle of the door is not going to work. It would all go to the bottom. <laughs> it would sink. When you left, it would sink. I had this argument with him. I want to say this New World Order. Uh, I like waffles, I like pancakes. I like them both. I like them both. Pancakes uh, melt the butter because they come hot. You take the pad of butter, you slide it under the blanket of the top one, and it melts melts nicely. A I like bit of a, a canard. I like I mean, okay, waffle. Wait, wait, a waffle. I like waffles. A, a waffle won't melt your butter for you. Nah, butter distribution too is tough. Too many yeah, too many pockets. crevices. Too yeah. many lines. Too many. Here's the world I want to live in. All waffles come with drawn butter. <laughs> Like lobster, it's just you order lobster, you get drawn butter. There's you order a place in Encino. A waffle, you get drawn I like butter. This. There is a place in Encino called, coincidentally or not, more than waffles, and they give drawn 
butter. And I go gaga every time. Like it's the first time I've ever seen it. Like Madonna <laughs> singing about her virginity. Every time I sing a song when the waiter brings that drawn butter out, I I sing a song of joy that, that, that somebody had the good sense to melt the butter for me. I love it. It makes me wild. I feel like a king when I see it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going down to that Mexican place in South Central. I'm going to take their cuisine, cuisine. and I'm going to bring it over to the waffle place. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go, you, my friend, have earned a cuisine. You deserve hey, it. Hey, but I'm just a lowly waffle man. I go, that, you drew the butter. You drew first blood butter. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to start a waffle place called First Butter and it'd be pictures of Stallone all over the place. Replace, replace his giant gun all right. with, with, with a stack of waffles all or right. a giant sausage. Oh, we only serve links here. All right. We've had that discussion too. We got to right? get this going because Tommy Howell says he has to go soon. But did oh, Mike, right. did Mike tell him to show up at the right time? Because he was coming on an hour 30? in, right? No, 2.30. Oh, 2.30? Yeah. Oh, I screwed that up then. I mean, I'm sure oh, he understands oh, you were oh, talking about okay. lines. Yeah, no, no, no. All right. Apologies to uh, formerly C. Thomas Howell, now Tommy Howell. I screwed that up. All right. Let's uh, take ourselves a break and uh, bring in the great uh, Tommy Howell. LeafWell, the number one telehealth provider for medical cannabis certifications, helping people access the powerful health benefits of cannabis for chronic pain, depression, anxiety, insomnia, very helpful. LeafWell is kicking off the new year with 20% off, a 20% discount on your certification with the promo code ADAM plus a 100% money back guarantee if you're not approved. Stop the side effects of heavy prescription drugs. Cannabis can be the natural, non-addictive medical alternative you should try first, not last. Medical cards give you access and can have benefits like huge savings on sales tax, up to 40% off or more, depending on your state. Let's get right in the new year with LeafWell. Right, Dawson? Go to LeafWell.com and get 20% off with the promo code ADAM at checkout. That's LeafWell.com and enter promo code ADAM at checkout. LeafWell.com, promo code ADAM. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts, love these guys. Thanks for coming on board, O'Reilly, for 2023. And uh, what can I say? I was with O'Reilly when I was swinging a hammer. I was with O'Reilly when I was punching a heavy bag. I've always been with O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in store or online. Get points and rewards sent straight to your phone or your inbox. You can get two, three, or even four times the bonus points on select purchases to get you to your next reward even faster. Receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points. And if you're uh, already an O Rewards member and not receiving the rewards, just add your email or mobile phone number and get a $10 reward just for updating your existing account. And you sign up. And it's quick and it's easy. Just go to O'ReillyAuto.com, O'ReillyAuto.com, or do it in a store. That's an O'Reilly store. It's time for Nicaraguan Name That Movie with Adam's buddy Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. Wolverine. If you said Red Dawn, Wolverines! you're correct. Now, back to the show. Tommy Howell, formerly C. Thomas Howell, is in studio. Sorry for the wait. I got screwed That's up all right, on man. Uh, the show. Good I, I didn't want to say anything, but I have to go do this thing tonight. So, you know. Yeah, this was, this was on me. But I'm super excited to be here, so thank you. I'm glad to have you. The album sounds great. American Storyteller. Appreciate it's out uh, wherever you find music. I did not even know that about your career. I know you played a lot of shows. You just played one with Tanya Tucker. Yes, right. Yeah, and Tulsa opened up for Tanya. She was super or cool. Tanya, sorry. Yeah, no, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, it was something that I didn't really expect. It kind of blew up over uh, COVID, 
you know, mm -hmm. as our as the industry shut down, I just kind of focused in another area, and that led me to something I've really been enjoying. And um, I found out I could sort of take that two hour format of storytelling from Hollywood, and I transferred it over to this two minute format, and I started writing songs, and and I put a little band together out of Nashville, and we're traveling, and things kind of got out of hand in a stupid way. Um. But in a good way, right? Yeah, in the best way, you know. But the, I guess, I don't know. I, I think maybe sometimes the best things happen when you don't really expect them. And I have no stress here. It's not like I'm trying to go out and be famous, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just having a good time. You I, look like a, a Bob Weir uh, in, in person. You know, somebody, right? somebody said that to me one time. I don't know if that's good or bad. but uh, No, that's you know, good. You know, you know it, it's, it's, I've earned every wrinkle and every gray hair on this head, Dave. You know, and I wear it proudly. And I tell everybody, they're like, Jesus, man, what the hell? What the hell happened to Pony Boy, right? I said, I got news for you, man. You know, Tom Cruise and Ralph Macchio look just like this, but uh, you know, they got they they go they go the extra distance and I'd But rather... do you but do you think you're tough because you eat beans? <laughs> yeah. You do. Yeah. Okay. All right. yeah. All right. What about you? <laughs> Dave, I don't know. I just wanted to bring up Powers Booth. Dave, uh, an awesome He's like, all name. that hate's gonna burn you up, kid. <laughs> like, keeps watched, me warm. It did. I watched that movie so many times. Uh, and so Dave, around the campfire scene, Dave takes umbrage with the "you think you're tough because you uh, eat beans," kid. But my problem is when he punctuates it by throwing the whiskey That's into right. the fire. Mm. I'm like, we're on a hill. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> even if you, even if all the don't whisk, waste the whiskey, all the whiskey's at the bottom of the hill where all the rooskies are. Yeah, I understand. And yeah. even if you weren't much of a drinker, you'd be drinking under these conditions. It's cold up there. Your, your yeah. parents are dead. Yeah. Your sister's been raped. <laughs> but 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 what he's thinking is this will look cool, and then I'll go to my dressing room. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it wasn't you guys didn't really live out there. <laughs> Not for real, but I will tell you this: it's the coldest I've ever been. Oh, really? Up there on Johnson's Mesa, it was so bald. Where is cold. that Johnson's Mesa? We were Colorado? Up, in, uh, up above, north of Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it was cold, cold, cold. I didn't know this about you because I always think uh, I kind of pick up at uh, Red Dawn um, with your career, but I didn't know that you were an ET. I never even thought about yeah, that. Yeah, I was one of the little rats in ET. And how did that come about? You know, my father uh, is still a stunt coordinator. Oh, really? And so I was raised in sort of the stunt part of the business and expect, you know, that's a very nepotistic world. The stunt, oh, yeah. you know, everybody grows up carrying their daddy's stunt bag, right? So um, I ended up acting and doing a lot of roles as a kid that were sort of a little more active. Like I would get cat, I did a Kool Aid commercial because I could ride the horse. Right. You know, that type of stuff. So um, I went into, my father picked me up at school and said, we're going to go meet this guy named Steven Spielberg. I never heard of him. And uh, he handed me a pack of cigarettes and he said, figure out how to light that. And, he, and I had a pack of matches and I'm, you know, struggling to light this cigarette all the way down to go meet Spielberg. And we walk into the casting office and there's like five other guys that look just like John Stamos, you know, blue eyes and feathered back, precious hair. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking... Jesus, we got to go because there's no chance in hell I'm going to get this. And he said, just wait, just wait. And they went out one by one, and I was the last one to go in. And I walked in, and there was Steven, and I was in the lights. And, you know, Kathleen Kennedy, Frank Marshall, the producers of Raiders, and Marcy Learoff, casting director. And Steven starts asking me some questions. And he was, you know, looking for somebody that could maybe handle the bike a little better than the other actors, so he didn't mm -hmm. have to always cut away from them. Right. And then came this question this role had already been cast, I had found out. And um, for some reason at the time, it was important to Steven that this character smoked cigarettes. Well, that's how you knew the tough kids. 1981. Like Kelly Leak and stuff. Like you know, a right. pack of cigarettes rolled up in the sleeve. Now we wear a patch. Yeah. That's how <laughs> yeah. All the tough kids wear the patch. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he asked me how I you know, felt about smoking a cigarette. So, of course... I'm 12, 13, and I, I pull out a rumpled pack of Marlboros, and I stick this cigarette in my mouth that does a direct 90-degree turn because it's broken in half, and I'm striking that match over, and I was like, all right, kid, you got the part. So that's how that went down. Mm. And I was in uh, I was in ET, and, and at the time, again, I had no idea. I wasn't – my family weren't actors. You know, it was just kind of a, hey, take it while you can type of thing. Were you out in Van Nuys? Is that yeah, I was born called? in Van Nuys. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm. Some North Hollywood – Guy. From there. 
from there. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible because there's not a lot of us. No, it's kind of funny. Uh, Dr. Drews from Pasadena, Mark Garagos, attorneys from La Crescenta. Jimmy, La where's he from? Jimmy is from either Vegas or Brooklyn. Okay. That's, We're not sure. Well, he started in Brooklyn. He went to Vegas. He's, he's, he has dual citizenship. But I, I, would, I, would say, I would say Brooklyn, Sheck. Would you say that? I guess, yeah. He, he vibes to Brooklyn as his native land. Right? Yeah, but I grew up. I had friends in, in Van Nuys. Uh, Grandpa Al Lewis from the Munsters lived in wow. Van Nuys. Yeah. Uh, as I spent, uh, I spent a lot of time riding my little bike from. It was a good North time. It was, it was, it was, it was cool to live in L.A. back then. But you guys, if I can jump in between the two of you, you two have two very different life arcs. Adam is swinging a hammer, you know, as soon as he's finished with high school, mm. and up until he's about thirty, you're a full-on A-list star without exaggeration. By what, fifteen? Well, you know. I mean, you're like a tiger beat. You're like the my, not by choice. But I mean, you're you're you know? you're you're in all those teen magazines that existed back in the day as the guy. Of course. And you're like what, fifteen ish years old, right? That's right. That's right. Well, it was a different time back there because the magazines that was our device. We everybody like clipped out pictures and hung them on their lockers. Sure, their... but why aren't you sort of more messed up? I was we were talking earlier about uh, what I, happens to one's I, brain. I, I, you... I could be very messed I up if you would messy. like. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> please tell me more, Adam. I, Actually, didn't know, I don't know the full. I don't want to. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you really. I'll tell you really. I my, my father wouldn't have it. You know, as a kid, I didn't have a um, like a precious sort of mom manage me managing me you know mm -hmm. it was like my father didn't give a shit he was mm -hmm. he, he didn't care who i was working for when i came home I, I had to go clean the stalls and stuff and it wasn't about me being some fabulous actor you know he he was like i'll bust your ass he didn't <laughs> care and i think there's something growing up in a rural aspect i mean i had chores i had to feed horses and clean stalls and where in van nuys to take was the, the well no i was born in van nuys but i was raised out in canyon canyon then we moved out oh. to valencia new home oh. so my father was a professional cowboy he rode bulls for 10 years for a living and mm -hmm. i was raised on a on you know on a ranch and i think i think that you know, you talk about kids going in and auditioning for Francis Ford Coppola or Spielberg and feeling the pressure of that. It's like I was participating at rodeo at that time. I was like, man, I got to go ride a bull. This is nothing. And so there, there was, was no, no gravity to you auditioning because no. it was a, it was a lark that you were in there in the first place. And and not not in a in a way that I didn't appreciate it. It was just I had other shit I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I think there was something attractive to that. I, I wasn't just lurking, hoping I got a job. That energy probably came through to Spielberg and beyond, that you're yeah. not some uh, well, you know Hollywood how it is kid, now. Right? You go into a room, you tell somebody how much you love their script and you love to work with them, they throw a rock at you. But if you go in and you're like, look, I got another thing to do. I, can we can we get this done real quick? They, they, they call you before you get back to your car, you know? So... It's a strange thing. Whenever you, you know, Adam, whenever you needed shit, nobody gave you anything. Now you get all the free stuff in the world. Come on. This is a very good point. You know what I mean? When I needed shit, I got I, I got a mug with a broken handle. That's it. And it's like, this will last you seven years, That's boy. Right. And now <laughs> I have to sift through shit yeah. because there was a very delineated point when I was a kid. There was trash and there was stuff you kept. Now there's a third in between zone, which is stuff from Amazon that's four years old that you're never going to use, but you cannot. You don't want to get rid of it. You cannot throw it away. No, it's something. It's uh, I I pulled a I pulled a beanie out the other day that was had Bluetooth speakers in the ears. <laughs> now I would never ever program it or use it while I'm jogging in the cold. But could you throw out a thing that would have been the most valuable yeah. thing you owned when you were 12? <laughs> at, at our no age, I, I no can't way. throw it out. It's a piece of technology that's mir miraculous. You, If you had this thing in the in the medieval times, you would have run the, the kingdom, would have looked to you. So what do I do with the beanie that's wildly uncomfortable because it's got these two hard plastic things in it? Can't wear it. Hurts my head. <laughs> never going to program in the drawer. it. Put can't it in the drawer. throw it away. Mm. I could give it to somebody who will also never use it use it yes and i think that's probably my new plan and now i'm swimming in junk that i will never never use it's like these celebrity gift bags that they want to give you yes. is there ever anything in there that you would keep if you were a chick or gay 
Maybe you could use 30% of it. Okay. Dudes who bust Broncos and write country songs about whiskey, there's nothing in that basket. Thank you. Actually, the basket is probably the most usable part of that whole thing. Get some cheese and some wine. Yes. Anything with cheese or wine. Anything I can eat, I can take. That's why I moved to Nashville. I just fit better there. Yeah, I would say. I do. When did you move? Uh, Well, I, I I moved to Atlanta about... Nine years ago, when that push to Atlanta was going crazy, all the series were they were doing like 60, 70 TV series in Atlanta to, mm-hmm. to maybe 30 in LA at the time, right? Right. So I was working in Atlanta all the time. And then uh, COVID hit, and I didn't want to get a degree in drinking on the other side of COVID. And we didn't mm-hmm. know what the hell was going on. I said, picked up a guitar and I started doing that thing and fell in love with music. And mm-hmm. um, I, I moved to Nashville and I'm doing that now full time. I think we can listen to some of what you've been. Yeah, I, you've been doing. I went through. I listened to the record, and it's it's the, the best way I can describe it is it, it it it's beautiful songs, great songs, but it's like a joyous celebration of misery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so it's it, it, somebody's it, it's dying in one good. of my songs, man. You know? <laughs> but uh, this song this song uh, grabbed me for a few reasons, which y- you'll hear, boss. But this one's called "Hell of a Life," and. Um, just listen to this for a couple minutes. Help save an alien when I was just 13. Shot down a helicopter yelling Wolverines. Recited Robert Frost staring at the sun. Held my ground at the devil's den with an empty gun. Smoke marijuana. With Cheech and Chong Survived the plane crash In the Amazon And Margaret made love to me On a tiger's tail Spent a lifetime in prison Hoping to make bail To hell of a life The one that I'm living I gotta keep moving on Doing the best Wow, that is a... <laughs> Who's that song about? Yeah, it can only be about. <laughs> Not too many people covering one that. man yeah. and one man only. <laughs> um, Sheck and I, I met Patrick Swayze once, yeah. and I was with Sheck mm. when I met him, <laughs> and that was my only encounter with Swayze's. You know Swayze. I've, you had, knew I've Swayze. had a strange connection with Patrick. You Much. know, when I was 12, my father did a movie called Urban Cowboy. He was a stunt sure, coordinator. I remember of that. that movie. And uh, Patrick's mother, Patsy, was the dance choreographer. Oh, yeah. And so I was hanging out on the set with Swayze a couple of years before we realized we'd you know, do three pictures together. So we, we were tight before we started working together. So, so when The Outsiders came around, um, there was all, already a relationship there, a connection. Well, we were sitting inside a restaurant. Swayze was out on the sidewalk. It was your restaurant. That was a restaurant that had part ownership. Yeah, and I think he was smoking a cigarette out on the the thing, and we spotted him, and uh, Sheck was like, you got to go say hi to him because you're not going to recognize me, but maybe he'll recognize you. Right. (laughs) So you lead the way. And uh, we went out and spoke to him, and uh, it was brief. He was a little bit curt. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. And... Probably had a lot on his mind at the time, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing, but it wasn't a, a gracious, warm welcome. Uh huh. That which is unusual because he was a pretty warm guy, Texan, you oh, know, really? Southern guy, um, and 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 pretty much wore his heart on his sleeve. Pretty approachable, and 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 you know, I got on with him really well. We did have one meltdown um, during uh, the filming of of Red Dawn, and. He got a little bit uh, miffed at at me running around with uh, Darren Dalton and Charlie Sheen, mm-hmm. and he kind of made a point to where you know he didn't think the click was uh, real appropriate for the movie, and so there was a big meeting called, and we got into a pretty pretty big row over it, and uh, Milia stepped in and and basically told Patrick that he needed to shut it down, and it was John Milius is directing Red Dawn, yeah, man. Road Apocalypse Now, Conan. Right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, um, was just such an epic storyteller. I mean, he wrote the best part of Jaws, you know. Oh, when, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, you know, when uh, when when Robert Shaw's telling that story. Sure. about uh, Showing the, the scars. The, yeah, all the scar stuff. He wrote all that. 
And he was telling us great stories. And, you know, Milius is still, he, he was like the last of them. The John Fords, man, the, the Sam Peckinpahs, the, the ball-busting, gun-toting, you know, action-yelling directors. And, and Did uh, you have a I sense? A from him. So, yeah, so it's Swayze. I mean, it, it always means good things if you find on the cable, you know, the scroll of movies. If you find a movie that has Swayze and Howell and Sheen in it, you're in for a good time. It's well, let's I mean, hope. Right. Well, oh, I mean, yeah. listen, yeah. I, I, I'm telling you from personal experience, 100%. I, I, know, I know for a fact it'll be a good one for me. But um, Sheen, do you pick up like, boy, this guy's a wild card. Do yeah. you know that you at know, 18? You know, you know what? Is he the biggest coxman of the gang? Charlie, um, he, he definitely uh, challenged the rest of us. Because he doesn't play that, the characters that he plays. It's like, he's a nice guy, like Swayze. He, he cracks the whip. He's the boss. And you're yeah. you're sort of like these, your arc is always this guy who's like, he's genteel. But oh no, he's, he's he'll we stab found the, uh, he'll the, stab the, the ugly yeah. underbelly of this kid. You know, sure. Has been sure. discovered now. But Sheen was always a nice kind of character. Kind of, right? Until he did that, uh, that epic role in Bueller's, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, right, right, right. He played the hooligan. Yeah, I thought he was great in that. Yeah, he was he fun. Was dark and yeah, menacing, yeah. right? Um, Jennifer Gray's in that one, same as Red Dunn. It's the yeah, same like exactly. seven of you in every movie of the exactly. eight. Well, Jennifer and Patrick really didn't get along at all. Mm. So there was a love scene written between their two characters in Red Dawn, mm. and Patrick was really against doing it and for mm. for a few reasons. I think one, you know, he probably didn't get on with her too well, but. Also, he's like, listen, we're, we're running from Russians for our lives. We're going to stop here and, and screw under a tree real quick, right? Mm -hmm. So like, maybe this doesn't work. It was a big scene for her, five-page character development scene that she really wanted to do. And he kind of fought for shooting it down, which he ended up winning. So the two of them didn't really speak the rest of the show, which is a, you know another three, four weeks of filming. Could you imagine two years later, this little project, Dirty Dancing, comes around? Oh, she's cast oh first. Right. She's cast oh, first. Oh, man. They spend, you know, months and months looking for Johnny, mm -hmm. going to every city. And finally, they call her up. I don't know. Congratulations. We found your partner. <laughs> In fact, you've worked with him. He's your friend. Oh, my Patrick God. Patrick Swayze. Could you imagine the look on her this face? This would be like if they said, we're going to redo Dumb, we're going to do Dumb and Dumber 3. We want you to star in it, Adam Carolla, and Kevin Smith is your co-star. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, any... Oh, yeah, there you go. I hate that guy. Well, wow, I never thought well, about that. Well, that's what happened. So, and that's just a testament. The point, the, the reason why I bring it up is, is because that film turned out so... I mean, that's the iconic American culture, you know? Mm -hmm. Dirty Dancing, and... That was Patrick. I mean, Patrick was capable of taking something bad and communicating and working through it and making it really great. And he was but, he was he was good at that. Not to speak ill of the dead, but we had a little dust up on that sidewalk in front I of my restaurant. I hear you, man. I hear <laughs> you. went on to explain he was a super Gentile guy. You saw the picture. Yeah. How yeah. 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 I'm trying to figure out what the hell and did you do to him. you went on to explain that he didn't get along with anyone on the set. <laughs> yeah. so, so you feel okay. Mm -hmm. I feel a little vindicated. Yes. All right, let's do a little bit of news. Oh, sure. Tommy has a hardish out, right? you got to right. be somewhere, so I thought we'd... Shoehorn let's a get the news let's get this it. gang back together sooner rather than I would later. love it. I have I yes, have many I hours worth of questions. We want to invite you out to Nashville because I'm starting a gig out at City Winery, which we'll be doing in Nashville. It's a it's a residency, and oh really? We'll give you some details, but we want to invite you out. And I've uh, heard about it. There's uh, stuff cooking. I'm yes, very excited good, about good. and flattered. Good, and I think I may bring a special musician with me. Possibly. Well, that's what we're doing. So we're bringing our friends out. We're playing music. And and we, you know, it's it's a good time. And the thing that's that I love about it, Adam, is it's live, and we're not taping it, we're not filming it. It's if you're not there, you don't see the show. And it's it's old school. Um, it's sort of a it's sort of a throwback to like the old variety shows, like Johnny Cash or John Denver, when they mm. come out, play music, bring out their friends, and have a laugh and some skits and stuff. So. We'll have to write a skit. Maybe we'll reenact some Red Dawn scenes or I something, am, okay? I am there. Okay. I'm your We're Swayze. down. We're down. <laughs> All right, Max Spada. All right, well, Ben Stiller is in the news right now because for some reason, the, the movie Tropic Thunder, people are tweeting about it again. They're like, hey, mm. we got to boycott Tropic Thunder, Well, right? you know, listen, Soul Man's the same. 
Mm. Right, I was just going to say, because you were in Soul Man. Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah. I don't catch hell from anybody except from cheeky little 13-year-old white girls. I have brought that mu- <laughs> The That's the only people dropping- that bother me. These little cheeky little 13-year-old white girls, man. Tropic but Thunder, just- they're satirizing it. I have talked about Soul Man before. Like, Talk about a movie that you would never be... If you pitched that for, for 22 seconds, people would be like, what the hell are you talking about? You can't, <laughs> you we can't, can't even... We can't make a movie like that. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, wait, the kid is going to put himself in blackface to get into school? Like, yeah. get the hell out of here, man. But you, you see, I think out of context, I would agree with that. But it's an anti-racist movie. Oh, I agree. I'm just saying the pitch by itself yeah. would be would be yeah. a non Well, that's what ends up happening. When you see a picture of me in blackface, these kids are like, what the hell is wrong with you, right? <laughs> I said, did you see the movie? They said, no. I said, well, you know, it's a message movie. Well, it's an anti-racist movie. That's kind of funny. Got Robert Downey Jr., obviously, in Tropic Thunder right. as well. So, But they're going after Ben because of uh, Special Mike or whatever that character's right. name was. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so, oh, no. Well, so Ben... So, so yeah, somebody tweeted Ben, please stop apologizing for doing this movie because he thinks Ben's been apologizing. And Ben responded recently, I make no apologies for Tropic Thunder. Don't know who told you that. It's always been a controversial movie since when we opened. I'm proud of it and the work everyone did on it. Oh, oh. yeah. Problematic. And, and Robert Downey Jr. in 2020, he defended his blackface saying it's, it's about how wrong blackface is. So I take exception. Yeah, mm. Right, yeah. it, it really is the intent that that's sure. The well, well, you see, that's the difference. You see, somebody says, "Why did you do blackface?" I said, no, there was no mocking involved on my part. Blackface to me is when you're an asshole and you know you go to a party and you think it's funny and you mock people. Yeah. Yeah. people laugh that's at that's you. what I did, but I was Mister. <laughs> 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 I did not. I pity the fool. That so you're an asshole. I just want to be clear right now. No, I used to say all the time because Jimmy would get crap for playing Carl Malone or Oprah or something. Yeah, I was right. like, that's not blackface. He's doing Carl Malone. Yeah. Blackface is minstrel show, generic, make fun Al of. Al Jolson? Yes. This right. is right. you trying to impersonate somebody who happens to be black. It's not Here's blackface. the thing, though. I, I think we're at a place where, no, we can't. If we're justifying shit, we're wrong. That's where we're at now. Well, it's more sort of explaining. I, I just, I don't like it when everything's an attack. If if somebody, I think it happened to, oh God, what? I don't I, like that this was 40 years ago and I have to, I have to talk about something you do yeah. when I was 18, right? But it's probably it's more so now, stupid. Right? I mean, was it, was it as controversial? Hell no. Hell no. no. It's not even really controversial. Like I said, I don't catch heat from it from, from the press. I don't catch heat from it from, you know, uh, uh, people of ethnicity. I, 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 if somebody, you know, if anything, they'll come up and say, hey, you know, I saw the movie and, and uh, it made me laugh or it made yeah. me smile. Or, and nobody really takes it personally. So when you're I know in- one person who did. Yeah, Spike Lee. Oh yeah, he hated it. Oh, Spike, but but he never saw it. Yeah, he he was talking crap on it before it even came out. Yeah, right? he never mm. saw it. He never saw it. So when you're playing to a capacity crowd like a honky tonk in Nashville, yeah. they don't all just turn their back to you and protest silently. Not because yet because of Soul Man. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Yeah, but we're open to it. You want to know? <laughs> you know, I tell you, my shows are real interactive. Um, I take a lot of questions. It's wide open. Oh, you want to okay. yell crap up at me, man? I'll respond. And and nice. and I'm wide open to it. I have, I'm sort of, that, that I'm the one that brought up Soul Man to you guys. I'm not afraid to address that. Listen, here's my take on it. If you are offended by it, we apologize. That was not our intention. If you watch the film, you can see that's not our intention. And I think we're all at a place right now where, what the hell? Take a freaking joke, people. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I have slightly My different God. twist. 1984, I portrayed uh, in blackface Mr. T. And if you took offense to it, you can kiss my ass. Well, there that's you go. a little different twist. There you go. So you feel bad about it. We, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I liked Mr. T. It's Halloween, and I got to do my best I understand. to look as much like Mr. T as, a, as, I, as I can. It's there hard. Is it's that hard? you? I oh, shaved yeah. my head. Wow. I got the chain. <laughs> wow, man. I grew, I grew wow. a beard. Wow. This is a real job. It's a commitment. Oh, wow. That is the A team right there I'm looking at. All right. It is hard to explain to your kids, I love though. This like show, my, man. my my thirteen year old boy, I, I I say to Jean Claude Van Damme, mm-hmm. like he can dig up me making jokes that are wildly inappropriate. But only ten years ago, it's really hard to make sense of like I you know 
I, it was okay to say that in 2008. It is no longer okay. okay. You will get in trouble for, for doing it. There's a, an uh, ad going around. Peter Sellers in 1972, one of the all-time funniest people, doing an ad for, I forget what, for TWA or whatever, and he's doing it as an Italian, like sure, a hardcore, like, sure. look at this, and he's and he's looking at the stewardess's bums and everything sure. else. And I'm like, oh, I mean, this is you, you would never be, be able to do this. This is one of the comedic geniuses of the last century. Sure. But this was completely out of line and would, you know, be laughed out well, of the Well, I room. feel much better having seen you dressed up as Mr. T. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, and if I ever catch hell, I'm just going to say, do you know what Adam Carolla did? <laughs> I slid so. right under the radar in 1984. <laughs> All right, so what's going on there? He's fighting for this? He's apologizing well, for yeah, it? Yeah, so he, he tweeted that he's not apologizing, although he has apologized for it before in 2018 because oh. of the Sean White thing. He wrote, actually, Tropic Thunder was boycotted 10 years... This is in 2018. Uh, Tropic Thunder was boycotted 10 years ago when it came out, and I apologize then. It always meant... Uh, it all it was always meant to make fun of actors trying to do anything to win awards. I stand by my apology. The movie, Sean White, and the great people and work of the Special Olympics because Sean White dressed up as Special Ed for uh, Special Simple oh. Jack. For Simple Jack, season for, yeah. for Halloween. Yeah. Oh. All right, let's do, yeah. let's do one more. All right, well, we were talking about Aaron Rodgers and how CEOs are just super rich. People can just do whatever they want. They do kind of weird things like the uh, sensory deprivation take. Not necessarily weird, but there's this, uh, there's this guy, 90 years old. His name's Richard L- Lugner, and he hires women to go to the ball with him, celebrities. Mm-hmm. Like past, uh, past guests to the ball were Pamela Anderson, mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian. He's hired to come with him as his date, Al McPherson. Which ball is this? This is the Vienna Opera Ball. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a All legit right. ball. He just wow. pays him. Yeah. So, yeah. He, yeah, he's a building tycoon from Austria. So now his next date, Jane Fonda. Right on. Mm. And Jane Fonda has accepted because she needs money to pay her bills and to support her grandchildren. Jane Fonda? Oh, she needs money? That's what she said. In a news conference, she needed the money to pay her bills and support her grandchildren. Jeez, first off, I wish my grandmother had that kind of commitment to supporting me. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> when I was a young Mr. <laughs> T. Right. And You're fly halfway around the world and go yes. on a date for you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so She's a couple things. Wasn't she married to Ted uh, Turner? Yeah. Turner, who's one of the was one of the like richest man, biggest First landowners. Her last in name's America. Fonda. Her dad is yeah. Come on, something's something weird about needs money. Yeah. She's yeah. eight, yeah. but she is eighty five, super lucid and dynamite. If you she did, hear her interview, wait, she that did social security Brady. check ain't covering. Yes, <laughs> uh, listen, I hate hell? I hate her guts. I know you do, but she's super you lucid do? and she's eight, yeah. she's a crackpot. <laughs> She's a total crackpot, but she's she's lucid and articulate. She's just a crackpot. Uh, she yeah. seems like she has a nice sense uh, of she you know, living life to the fullest and idiot. all that. She's an idiot. <laughs> but but the vets love her. But the vets love her, <laughs> yeah. especially the Vietnam vets. Okay. <laughs> but she's doing it. She's just saying this because the, the thing about celebrities, look, we had Jason Alexander in here. When he turned 35, his friends just bought him Bill Shatner. So right. like, hey, Shatner. Here's you know twenty five grand and go out to lunch with this guy. He's a huge fan huh. of yours. You know what I mean? Like celebrities will do it. It's a corporate gig, right? Sure. Essentially, and and then by the way, I don't look down my nose at it. If 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 you're a blues traveler or your Shatner or whoever, someone just offers you money and you go, yeah, I'll play that kid's party. Mm-hmm. That's just she's just taking the money to do the party, which is. Fine, just taking care of my grandkids makes it a weird, sort of weird justification. Right. Like, we would have been fine uh, if she would have just done it, and we didn't know why. Yeah, yeah I well, like money. We knew why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's anyway. right. She likes money. So there was a couple things about it. First, she told reporters she thought, it because it's the Vienna Opera Ball, she thought she was going to an opera. Oh, the mini sausages? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> Cuisine. Uh, it was a sausage party. Ben, look up her net worth. We should all take sure. guesses, oh, but geez. I got to say it's $100 million plus. That's yeah. what I would so say. So one, plus. she thought she was going to an opera. Two, she has one rule, no dancing. What? She won't That's dance. That's a weird thing. So she's going to the ball. Yeah, she's going for sure. She'll be the plus Well, one, that might no be dancing. a physical thing. She might be a little yeah. beat up there. She said she has a fake shoulder, there two fake hips, and two fake knees. What about the titties? Mm. <laughs> They're real. <laughs> <laughs> real real Their cheeks They're don't real. look uh, all the way natural either <laughs> yeah. at this point. Who has been in? Uh, this is a legit question. I'm not trying to curry favor with you, or perhaps I am. Okay. <laughs> have you been in more memorable movies? I don't know how we would de- describe right. it. Iconic movies than Jane Fonda. 
Oh, hell no. I, well, I was thinking about Raquel Welsh when she passed away. Right. I was thinking, is her most famous movie... Um, uh, 2000 BC? Shawsh- no, right. Shawshank Redemption. Oh. She's in it as a poster, oh. but I think that's her oh, most noteworthy movie. Sure. Oh, yeah. oh. I'm out of there. She didn't actually do any highly regarded movies. I think you maybe have been in more great movies than Jane Fonda. Think about that. <sighs> How many human beings in the existence of people have been in more... I can't, however we would describe that. That just you. means I took a lot of shit I shouldn't no, have done. No, that's man. not true. I, yeah. You've been in like legitimately five movies that anybody in the last that are probably half century in your, that are probably in your collection right you know i probably, yeah. I probably you in, in the them. average they don't have that anymore but but a lot of people would say like you know red dawn and probably the outside definitely the outsiders the hitchhiker the hitcher right and the uh, hitcher i mean yeah she's yeah. got yeah. on golden pond i guess right. she's in that Barbarella. masterpiece yeah she's in that masterpiece 80 for brady 80 oh for brady. yeah that oh, she may, gonna that may have put noms. her over the top yeah. well, she needs to support her grandchildren dawson right. i have one question for the for adam and for and for you i should call you tommy yeah i'd rather call you c I call me c more. no i'll call you tommy <laughs> that okay. works if red dawn if that happened if the russians invaded right now it, it is happening but I mean, not like we're not seeing parachutes yeah. come down. Okay, who would mm. make it? Would you two? Would you two like each other to be? Would you like to be in each other's company? I think this I'll, among I'll celebrity first. types, I think you guys would do nicely together. Like, like, yeah. like, would you pick me for your foxhole or no? Yeah, oh, yeah. well, you know how to yeah. you know how to ride horses as you. Yeah, you could, could pass the time with the guitar. Yeah, Adam's right. good with a hammer he and building build. stuff. Yes, yeah. he can build shit. Yeah. I would do to you what Swayze refused to do yeah. under that tree. <laughs> wow. That's uh, yeah, number okay. one. We'd make love. Number two, yeah. I didn't say it. I just I leave it open. Okay. The next thing, and Shaq will back me up, I can pee anywhere. Yes. You can hit that and radiator? I could hit that radiator. Mm-hmm. I could thread that needle <laughs> if I needed to. <laughs> but also just the general ability to kind of pee on the move and on demand under these circumstances. Right. They never cover it in a movie, but at some point, you're going to take a piss. The Ruskies are coming up the hill. You're yelling, let's go. And he's yelling, you're yelling, is slowing this down. I got nervous bladder. I got a hang here. You know, and I could, I, I'm peeing before yeah, the they dick comes out. Yeah, they never write those scenes. They never watch. Well, the, 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 the thing we've talked about, because we've done, we, we, we love Red Dawn so much that Adam and I have done a commentary track. We've done a director's cut, but it's me and Adam Beautiful. talking over the 90 plus minutes of, of the glory. I wish I was movie. there for that. I wish you would have been. Maybe yeah. we need to redo it. Okay, yeah. good. The answer Version to that. Two. Good. How does Darren Dalton's character get away and get the bug on him from the from the roost? How, how do, without, without, without anybody us noticing knowing, he's gone? Without us knowing, right? Um, that's probably a really good question for John Milius. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wish Swayze were here to answer. Like he's he's the one who does what okay, nobody so else got, has the guts to do. You guys probably recall the oh, no, time you take line out. better than me. No, I kill him. You kill he kills oh, Darren Dalton right. because, yeah. because Swayze can't do it. He can't cries. Do it. <laughs> and I say, I should have let it. it turn. I'll do it, and I rip him, and I just swing up on that horse and ride out of town. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. That's it, man. All right, a, a good note to go out. <laughs> on, okay. I guess the album, American Storyteller. Thank you very That's much, Adam. That's Tommy's album. I'll see you in Nashville. Yes, sir. Shex earned himself a nice plug. Avenge uh, me! <laughs> Avenge <laughs> me, boys! Mr. Lister, Tuesday. Keep it down, old man. Nights on Spotify. No, 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 not that. Thing. Wait, before we Minus go. Minus three. I'm three. All of us Wolverines, please. Uh, all right, hold, hold on. All right. Wait, let me get Shex. He's almost Shex, done. what do you need in the plug? Minus three extra points. Don't call it a comeback. Those are my shows. Don't call all right. it a comeback. All right, me, Las Vegas, coming up at Kimmel's Club. That'll be March 9th. You can uh, check that out. Go to AdamCrow.com. I'm available. Com. I'm just saying I'm available. Come on down. Just uh, saying. Go to AdamCrow.com for all the live shows. All right, on the count of three. We're doing Wolverines. Yes, we are. Yes, sir. Oh, I love you guys. Real. All right. One, two, three. Wolverines! Wolverines! Yes.